Good morning. Today I'm going to conduct a lecture on the literature of the lost generation. Lecture 6. First of all, let me introduce with the plan of our today's lecture. First of all, we are going to define the term lost generation. Uh, what this term means and how did it arrive. Then we'll talk about the representatives of lost generation as Sherwood Anderson, Francis Scott Fitzgerald, and Ernest Hemingway. Before talking about the representatives, I would like to give some information about the history of lost generation. As we know, lost generation appeared during World War I. The term was popularized by some people who were against of censorship, against feudalism, and they tried to uh, organize their own group. They escaped from hardships and, and found a place for themselves in America. And they were called expatriates, people living outside their home country. So they found freedom in America and came there to create their own group. And one of them was Ernest Hemingway. He was considered as a person who popularized the term lost generation. He's the author of The Sun Also Rises. Uh, in his volume, Hemingway credits the phrase uh, Gertrude Stein, who was a mentor and patron. Gertrude Stein was uh, the main uh, character of his book and he was representative uh, of Lost Generation. And there were some other representatives as Francis Scott Fitzgerald, Stein Elliot, John Dos Passos, John Steinberg, Waldo Pierce, and others. Uh, among them we can mention T.S. Eliot as one of the popular writers of Lost Generation, James Joyce, Sherwood Anderson, John Dos Passos, John Steinberg, William Faulkner, Aldous Huckless, Isadora Duncan, Alan Seger, and Aaron Copland. Most of them tried to escape from the hardships and from uh, the life which uh, seemed very hard for them and tried to find freedom in America and they called themselves the representatives of lost generation. Now let's move to our next plan. In this uh, plan we are going to discuss uh, representatives of lost generation as we mentioned Sherwood Anderson. Sherwood Anderson was born in Camden, Ohio on September 13, 1826. He was the third child in the family and uh, family, his family settled permanently in Clyde, Ohio in 1884. The income was rarely adequate without the added help of the children's income. Due to the difficulties, Anderson's father began drinking and uh, his mother died in 1895. Sherwood was eager to take an odd jobs and earned name Joby. However, his interest caused him to miss school often. He finally left high school before graduating. In 1896, Anderson left Clyde for Chicago where his uh, brother Carl was living. He attended Wittenberg Academy of 1900 and in 1904 he married Cornella Lane, the daughter of Felsa Ohio wholesaler. In 1914 he divorced Cornella and married Nancy Mitchell. In 1922 he separated from Mitchell before marrying Elizabeth Prell two, late, uh, two years later and he died of peritonitis in March of 1941 on his way to visit Panama. When we talk about his literature, uh, we should mention we, we can divide his works into early and later works. In his early works, we can include Windy Mark Pearson's Son, which was written in 1914, and uh, Marching Man, written in 1917, Mid American Chants collection of poems, which was written in 1918, Winesburg, Ohio, classical collection of tales. Poor White, The Trium of the Eek, which was written in 1921, and Horses and Men, which was written in 1923. 
He made unsuccessful attempts at poetry as, as well, the first being a free verse collection which was called Mid American Chants, written in 1918. It was a collection of his uh, free verse. He saw himself as a part of the literary tradition of Whitman, Twain, and Dreiser, men who had appreciated the common American. When we talk about his later works, we should mention a storyteller story which was written in 1924, Many Marriages written in 1923, Dark Laughter written in 1925, the faulty novel Many Marriages was published in 1923 as we mentioned, and he traveled to Virginia and took such a liking to the countryside that he bought the, a land there. In 1927, he also bought Virginia's Marin Publishing Company and became the editor of two newspapers. They, tra they traveled uh, in, after another failed marriage. Uh, Anderson ma married, as we mentioned, to Eleanor Copenhaver, with whom he finally appeared happy. They traveled a great deal and studied social conditions. Among his publications concerning this matter in the 1930s were Deaths in, woods, in the Woods, and other stories written in 1930-1933, Puzzled America, a book of essays, and uh, Kit Brandon, which was written in 1936. So his influence was dying out during this period. Very significant American passages of prose exist in his writing through the very end. Many of these passages have been overlooked because of their place within a larger faulty work. In years since, Anderson has been rediscovered and appreciated, idealizing the moods of thought and societal themes he had been criticized for after his peak. So, uh, it was about uh, Sherwood Anderson. Now we'll move to our next representatives, Francis Scott Fitzgerald. As we mentioned before, he was also one uh, of the founders of Lost Generation. Uh, he was born in 1896 um, during World War I. He uh, enlisted himself in the U.S. Army and uh, during his service he fell in love with a rich and beautiful girl, Zelda Zaire, who lived near Montgomery, Alabama. And uh, Zelda broke off the engagement because he was relatively poor. After he was discharged at war's end, he went to seek his literary fortune in New York City in order to marry her. So when we talk about his literary work, his first novel, The Side of Paradise, written in 1920, became a bestseller. And at 24, they married. Uh, neither of them was able to withstand the stresses of success and fame, and uh, they squandered their money. They moved to France to economize in 1924 and returned seven years later. Uh, Zelda became mentally unstable and had to be institutionalized. Fitzgerald himself became an alcoholic and died young as a movie screenwriter. So when we look through his works, we should mention one of his uh, primarily known novel The Great Gatsby, written in 1925, a brilliantly written, economically structured story about the American dream of the self-made man. The protagonist of this novel, Gatsby, J. Gatsby, discovers the devastating cost of success in terms of personal fulfillment and love. Next of his work that is uh, worth to mention is Tender is a Night, uh, which is written in 1934, uh, which also describes a young psychiatrist whose life is doomed by his marriage to an unstable woman, and some stories in the collection, Flappers and Philosophers, Tales of the uh, Jazz Age, written in 1922, All the Sad Young Men, written in 1926. And uh, more than any other writer, Fitzgerald captured the glittering, desperate life of the 1920s as other representatives of Lost Generation. His second novel, The Beautiful and the Damned, continued his exploration of self-destructive extravagance of his time. Fitzgerald's special qualities include 
a dazzling style perfectly suited to the theme of seductive glamour. Uh, in his blue green men and girls came and went like moths among the whisperings and champagne and the stars. These are taken from his famous book, The Great Gatsby. Now let's move to our third representative of Lost Generation, Ernest Hemingway. And here I would like to start with one of his saying, there is nothing more difficult than to write a simple, honest story about a man, Hemingway said. First, you must, what you, you must know what you are writing about, and then you must learn to express it in writing. It takes a whole lifetime to do these two things. So, uh, it's written by Ernest Hemingway, and uh, we should mention that throughout of, uh, his life, he studied people and life all over the planet. He always looked for events in which all the beauty of everything bad in man can be seen. He had his own style of writing. His stories seem very simple in composition, but very few events. But we feel that there is very much behind that each event that he describes. When we talk about his life, he was born in July 1899 at Oak Park. Uh, he uh, lived in a highly respectable suburb of Chicago and he was uh, the second of six children his father was a doctor so um, if you talk about his life he joined the kansas uh, city star as a cop reporter in 1917 and uh, he during his lifetime he did a lot of works he volunteered as an ambulance driver on the italian front and wasley was badly wounded in 1918 he began to write features of the Toronto Star Weekly in 1919 and was married in 1921. Now let's talk about, about, uh, talk about his works. Uh, first, we should mention The Sun Also Rises. Uh, most of his stories have great truths in them, truths about people, about the world around them. He's, he works were born in the mind and in the heart of an honest and good man. He was very strong and courageous. He was a brave soldier, skillful hunter, fearless boxer, and enthusiastic fisherman. He saw a lot of uh, tragedies of Spain in 1936. His life was full of danger, and most of his works depicted these stories. Uh, here we mentioned uh, his works as uh, written here Th three stories and ten poems were also one of his uh, famous works but his first big novel was the sun also rises as we mentioned the heroes of these uh, works were people of the lost generation they had nothing in the past and nothing will have in the future they had speaking about their feelings, stories of their sufferings. They tried to conceal their real inner world under the mask of indifference. They drink to forget the emptiness that is in and around them. Most of his works had uh, such characters uh, and he uh, tried to use such dialogues that aimed at concealing the thoughts of the heroes. The theme of the lost generation is also found in his second work, A Farewell to Arms, which was written in 1929. This novel is about birth and death of a great human being. Two themes are intermingled in this novel, the theme of love, which dies, and the theme of war, which shows sufferings. So, next two essays are Death in the Afternoon and Green Hills of Africa. Uh, where again we can feel the crisis in his work but uh, the following works is The Snows of Kilimanjaro and The Short Happy Life of Francis Macumber. He sharply criticized the representatives of the American high class, uh, the role of money in the behavior of the heroes. Uh, next of his works is American Soldier which is written in 1937. Uh, on Americans' death in Spain, written in 1939, and we should also mention his uh, famous play, The Fifth Column, which is written in 1938, shows 
uh, shows a struggle for mattering. And other books are To Have and Not to Have, Man at War, which is written in 1942, Across the River and Into the Trees. So, and we should also mention the, one of his famous books, The Old Man and uh, the Sea, which is written uh, in 1952. Let's talk about uh, this uh, famous work of him. It is a story full of humanism, the story about courageous people, and the main idea of that work is a man can be killed but not defeated. And we should mention that it was one of his last published works. And this work will always be the expression of his love to the common people. For this work he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1954 for his mastery of the art of modern narration. So, the books of the big man, as he is called in Cuba, of courageous fighter, traveler, life lover, will be ever remembered by people. So, uh, today in, in our lecture, we mainly talked about the uh, representatives of lost generation and um, the term of lost generation itself. And as a home task, I would like to give you some questions. I want you to write a short essay about the phenomenon of lost generation and peculiar features of Sherwood Anderson short stories, federal uh, problems of the lost generation, basic themes in Hemingway's novels and stories. What is the ma main idea of the old man and the sea? So I want you to cover all these questions until uh, our next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.